I'm also fully aware of all the challenges confronting our region, especially the economic hurdles that hinder our progress. To elevate our people from poverty to prosperity. It is imperative that we unite as a community and develop innovative approaches to unleash our vast economic potential. We must continue to identify and develop partnerships that promote investment in key sectors and promote regional trade. Furthermore, we must invest in our infrastructure and cultivate a conducive business environment to empower our communities to stimulate growth and build resilience against external shocks. Together, we can pave the way for a prosperous future for all ECOWAS. So, breed. Excellencies, Head of State and Government, distinguished guests, I also acknowledge the financial challenges of our organization. Difficult economic conditions and consistent payment of financial commitments to ECOWAS have contributed to the current plight to ensure ECOWAS has adequate resources for its program and activities. I urge all member states to ensure full compliance with the protocol on the community levy. Nigeria, under my leadership, is committed to leading the exam, to leading by example by remitting its collected levies to the organization. Round of today's 65th session. Um, Having a new mandate, I will request Mr. Fai to please become our special envoy along to go to do a round clock walk with uh, our brothers in Mali. Burkina Faso and Niger and coordinate with me if necessary and with the commission. Thank you, Mr. President. Jackson. Then you give the vote of thanks. <laughs> Now that I've accepted to continue the, the service with uh, great members and great minds that have uh, committed to democratic value and the journey uh, for us in, in the region. I'll continue my utmost best to serve our interests and build on democratic value and the structure that we inherited. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. We have now come to the... Excellencies, the elections that have taken place so far this year and those that took place last year here in Nigeria, in Guinea-Bissau, in Sierra Leone and Liberia show that despite all odds, democracy is alive in our region. We look forward to the consolidation of this trend in the region 
as we prepare for a major election in Ghana later this year. Excellencies, reminding ourselves of these positive developments is not in any form an exercise in self-glorification. Rather, it is a recognition of the progress we as a community have made. But the significance of these events and developments is being overshadowed by the multidimensional challenges that our region faces. Our region is still confronted with multiple interlocking threats, including existential ones. These include climatic and man-made crises, leading to terrorism and violent extremism and food insecurity. Livelihoods continue to be threatened by illegal and unsustainable exploitation of our land, forest, and marine resources. Governance deficit and marginalization have strained social contracts, engendering bitter rivalries and unhealthy competition. To complicate the situation, our region has become the arena of geostrategic and geopolitical rivalries and the theater of misinformation and disinformation that engenders mistrust among and within communities and undermines social cohesion. <laughs> 